hi everyone welcome back to my kitchen and channel so today I'm going to show you guys how I do my version of polori I have here the flour let me walk you through all of the ingredients before we get started so for the polori mixture I have here brown sugar I have here baking powder I have salt I have yeast I have saffron or turmeric and I have some green seasoning that will be for the polori mixture and the water will go into the flour for the chutney I'm going to be doing tamarind chutney since I have fresh tamarind here from my tree so I, I will shell it out and show you guys what it looks like I have here my brown sugar my light salt some more green seasoning I have the fresh bandania this is what my green seasoning is made up of together with garlic and pimento peppers and hot peppers and I'll be using some anchar masala to give it that color so let's get starting in putting this mixture together and while that mixture is um, being raised for a couple of uh, minutes I will put I will shell the tamarind out and put it together and show you guys how to put this wonderful polori or pillory dough it's very delicious together it is a delicacy or a dessert a snack here in the Caribbean and it's enjoyed by most people so it's very simple to put together so let's get starting we have our baking powder will go in our salt will go in our brown sugar will go in and our yeast will go in and our green seasoning will go in this is two tablespoons of green seasoning and I will add half of this turmeric powder because I don't want it too yellow yellow I want it on a golden color side give everything here a mix and we'll add our water now I'm starting off with two cups of water and see now polori dough or polori mixture has to mix a little softer than a sada roti consistency so my two cups of water is all gone so I will get my another cup of water this has to mix and leave for about 30 minutes if you want to fry it same time it's better to leave it to rest for that 30 minutes because I find when you leave it to set or to raise it tends to be a more fluffier polori ball as some people say it rather than a stiff polori ball and I will get my rest of water this is my other cup of water here As you can see it's not yellow yellow so we're just gonna mix it until it's soft and let it cover it and let it rise as you can see it's still stiff My little extra turmeric will go in always 
that up with a little bit first. This is half, half a teaspoon to our four cups of flour and give it that mix really, really good. And you will feel it with your hands. It will tell you when it's good. It's a little stiff for me. So you see that little bit of water that I added into the turmeric, the saffron bowl. I'm going to mix it out with that. Always mix it a little softer than stiffer because when it, after it has risen, it will have a nice consistency. And you don't want to put too much of salt in the mixture because our chutney is going to be very tasty as well too. So it has to be a balance with the boat. And that's it. I am going to cover it with a plastic or clean wrap and a kitchen towel and leave it for that 30 minutes. As I said, the longer you leave it to rest, it is going to be a better dough. You can leave it for like an hour to raise. So it all depends on when you want to use it. Next, we'll move on to the tambran chutney. So this is fresh tambran from my tree. And this is what how we get to the flesh of it. This is what we're going to use to make our chutney. Again, I'll show you guys. We just crack the shell. It comes out really easy and just pull off your tambran with the flesh. Do not get any shells in here because it is going to taste bad. I'm going to shell out the rest. To make that chutney so the tambran is shelled out this is what it will look like with all that flesh this is the shell that i got from it so i'm going to discard that and we will start making that chutney this is what we're going to use to flavor up our chutney so i have here our bandania or shadow benny if you don't have this cilantro is fine to work with I have pimento peppers here and I have um, garlic. So let me just blend this with some water and I'll get started. We'll move over to the stove. So I've put my tambran in the pot and I will add my water. This is hot water from the kettle. I always have my hot water in hand to make my chutneys. Or to cook with, I should say. And the water will soften it up and all that flesh from that seeds or that tamron pods will come out and I will add my sugar so I'm going in with half of my sugar this is two cups of sugar here tamron is a sour thing but my this tamron is a sour sweet tamron so I'll taste while I go and add sugar because I don't want it on the too sweet side. I want it on the sweet and sour side. And once I see that consistency of that sauce when it's almost finished, I'll gradually add sugar. And I have my salt. Now the salt is something you add a little bit from the beginning. And when you're tasting it as it cooks, you will know if it needs more salt to your likeness. So you will average your salt and I'm going to cover it and let it start to boil and then I'll show you what we will add again. So the flesh from the seeds is starting to let out I'll show you see how the water is turning to that brown color and you will see that flesh in that water liquid so 
here is where we will add our green seasoning that we grinded. So I'm starting up with one spoon. And we'll taste as we go because remember there's all that pepper in there and we don't want it too 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 hot where you can't really eat it and enjoy it. So as I said it's something you have to play up with to get to your taste. And here I have my anchor masala. You can, it's optional, but I like it with that anchor masala taste. It uh, reminds me of that sweet tambran sauce that we used to get in school long ago. When we pay like 50 cents for some sweet tambran sauce and we get it in, in the little brown, the piece of little brown paper in the canteens or in the little stalls by um, in front of our schools so that's the taste and the consistency I'm going for here for my pilori always check it with a spoon to see that color because it has to reduce down a little bit and taste it for that salt and add it as you go by. I am going to add in the rest of my brown sugar. And by the time it's finished, it's gonna have a really nice consistency and a flavor. And in goes our next spoon of that green seasoning and some of our anchor masala again that anchor masala was quarter cup as i said it all depends on how much tambran you have that's it that's how you're going to make it so for my amount of tambran my ingredients measurements will be different to yours so All this has to do now is just reduce down a little bit. So I'm going to cover it and leave that little space. Let some of those seeds loosen up a little bit again. And let it reduce down. It will get to a nice sticky-ish consistency. It's watery right now. It's too liquidy right now. And I'll show you when it's done. So we're going to check on the mixture here. We can start to fry up now. All we have to do is just give it a mix. See how it has risen really nicely. So we're just going to give it a mix. Let all that gases come out. And then we can start to fry. Always mix back your polori mixture before actually taking up and frying just for that gases to come out and now we can move over to the stove see that consistency for that texture frying our polori balls have a bowl with some water so you can always dip your hands in that water and while our hands is wet we're going to pick up some of that dough or mixture and we're going to squeeze don't pick up too much because it is going to give you some problems and you have to fix it back in your hands and squeeze so I'm doing it with my left hand I am a right hander so it's up to you whatever whichever hand works for you
when you do it this way, all of your flories will come out wrong and smooth and nice. It is a little messy process, but you will get really nice looking ones. Once your oil is cut nicely, you can lower it down a little bit. And continue to put. Take your time and put the mixture. Don't get scared when you're doing it. It will it's just a little patient. And once they float up to the top, if it doesn't flip for itself, just turn them. I'm gonna take all these. See how beautiful they are? Take out all and then put, put an excess. Some people do it fast, some people do it slow. You do it to your pace.
you can use a tablespoon as well too to do it if the hand motion isn't working for you or technique isn't working for you use a tablespoon and drop it in or a little ice cream scoop and drop them in and as I said once that oil gets hot you just put it on medium where your polori balls will not be over browning You're going to fry them until it's a nice color, golden color. You want it. Or you can fry it a little darker than a golden brown color. A little darker than this. So you will get a crunch to it. If you leave it like this, it's going to be just soft and fluffy. So it all depends on the texture you want it. And we're going to take out the ones that's looking good. Have a dish or a bowl with paper towel nearby where you can put them in. I'm going to continue to take them out and continue to fry and I'll show you the ending results. how we serve it with the tamarind sauce this is the tamarind sauce just smother it all on top Time to enjoy!